This is Andy Baroff, Boxing Social, in association with Betfred, and I'm joined by middleweight prospect Diego Pacheco here in Texas. Diego, firstly, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, brother? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Obviously, good to hear you're doing well yourself. It's been a, a while since I've last caught up with you. How's life been treating you? How have you found the, the first couple of months of the new year? Uh, really well. You know, I, um, after my last fight, I took a, a little break because, you know, I did eight fights in the, my first 12 months as a pro. So uh, I feel the really, camp went really well and just excited to be here, man, ready to perform. Let's just reflect on that, obviously, as I've got you away from it, every media event that's going on at the minute. How have you found your first year or so as a professional boxer in comparison to amateur? Uh, you know, it was, it was a complete change in my life, you know, from going from amateur to pro. But, you know, I feel like everything's going really well, everything's going as planned, and, you know, I'm just excited for the future, man. We've obviously seen Eddie sign another youngster today, Mark Castro, in and amongst a lot of others uh, who were all young when he signed yourself as well as Mark. How are you finding actually being part of a stable of so many young prospects? So you'd have probably boxed on similar shows with us amateurs? Yeah, definitely. All the guys, you know, Alexis, Nikita, all these guys, we're all, we're all like growing up together in the amateurs. So now to, to be able to, you know, we're all signed into the same promotion and to be able to fight under the same cards, it's, it's really good. You know, actually me and Alexis, Alexis was on this yeah. card as well. We used to talk about it as amateurs. <laughs> we used to always talk about it like, man, imagine us pros fighting on the same cards and stuff and now it's happening. So it's really cool, man. What do you think it is that, or look, at least from what we've seen back in the UK, a lot of you have kind of decided to sign with Eddie Hearn and Matt Drew. What, what is it that's appealed to you about them? Um, honestly, I feel like I feel like Eddie Hearn is the best promoter in boxing right now. Um, I know a lot of other guys who sign with different companies who who aren't as active or don't get as many fights as we do. So I just feel like Eddie Hearn is killing the game right now. I know Eddie speaks very highly of not only yourself but the rest of the youngsters coming through from the U.S. as well as back home in the U.K. How much does that mean to you to have that trust from him and that kind of extra push to want to get you out as much as possible? Yeah, exactly, man. Eddie's a great guy. Um, I feel like he's a, a true fan of all his fighters. You know, he motivates us all the time. You know, he tells us to keep working hard. And, and you know, it means a lot to have someone like him speak so highly of us. Yeah, it's really good, man. I asked Mark earlier, what was his first conversation like with Eddie? What was your first conversation like with Eddie? Can you remember it? Yeah, I remember um, when I signed with him, um, uh, my manager put him on the phone with me. Like, we did a three-way call, and I was just like, man, I'm really talking on the phone with Eddie Hearn. Like, it was just crazy, man. But I, I met him in Chicago for the first time, and as soon as I met him, he was really cool, a real cool guy. What's he like away from the cameras? Because I've just done my interview with Frank Smith, and Frank said, off camera, he's obviously very professional, very businessman, but obviously on camera, we see a completely different side. We see a no-context turn side that we see. What, what's, what's he like off camera? Uh, Eddie Hearn, um, he's really cool, man. He's a really funny guy. Um, uh, I, f I feel like um, on, on when he's like on stage, it's like the same way he is with us. You know, he's a real, really funny. Uh, he's really cool, and yeah, he's just an overall a nice guy. Obviously, in your position now, you're edging ever closer to 10 and 0. How how are you kind of seeing the rest of this year playing out for yourself? Once you reach that landmark, how do you kind of see the rest of the year going? Uh, I feel like this year would be like another year of just developing, you know, getting experience. And I feel like next year would be a really big year for me where, uh, you know, I want, I want to get into the little title fights, you know, NABF fights and, yeah. and WBC youth and stuff like that. Uh, I can't wait to get to those little titles. I see a lot of the little gleam and the smile on your face just mentioning titles. If it was up to you, what level do you feel you could operate at now? Do you feel like you could actually fight for certain titles at the lower, right. lower down right now? But obviously you've got to follow the path that Eddie's guiding you? Or Yeah, I feel like I'm ready. I'm ready to fight for those little titles because, you know, not to say any names, but I spar with some guys who have titles like that. And I'm like, man, come on. <laughs> but, you know, I just trust my team, you know, trust my management team, my training team. You know, whenever they, they think I'm ready, then, you know, that's when we'll be ready. Obviously... Again, was a brilliant amateur background for yourself, and you've started to turn heads as a professional. How are you finding any added pressure with that? Have you seen any added pressure in yourself, or has it been kind of a breeze as of yet? Oh uh, yeah, I feel like um, in every fight, you know, I have a lot of there's big expectations on me, you know, and I feel like um, you know there's always a lot of people watching me and a lot of people who look up to me. So I feel like I always have to prepare myself 100% to perform. But you know, it's always been like that, so it's not really any pressure. It's just more like that's what I have to do, you know. Obviously, again, I spoke to Mark earlier. Mark mentioned Eddie said he wants to try and get him to across Europe to different countries. When can we expect to see you start to make waves across Europe? Um, my last fight was in Saudi Arabia, but uh, this year, hopefully, um, I'll be in the UK.
fight, my first fight in the UK. I can't wait to go out there. So obviously, I, I remember your fight in Saudi. I was out there covering that, that card. But just with Europe itself, and you mentioned the UK, what's your thoughts on the British fans? I spoke to Mark again to bring you Mark up. But I spoke to him off camera, and he said he loves the British fans and why that they are. What was your initial thoughts on the British fan base from boxing? Yeah, um, I mean they're 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 really big on boxing out there, huh? Because I have a lot of followers, uh, British followers from the UK and. And a couple of my friends who fought in the UK, like the magician, uh, Ota, Ota Jones, um, they tell me all the time, they're like, man, when you go out there, you're going to love it. The fans are go crazy. So, yeah, I'm excited to go out there. You going to enjoy the food out there as well? Uh, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. And obviously, you just wanted to get, get forward on Saturday night now. What should we expect from you come Saturday? What do you know about your opponent? Um, about my opponent, I know, he, I know he's real experienced. He has a, few, a, lot, a lot of fights. Um, but I know he's never been in anyone in the ring with anyone who's as good as me. So um, I'm real confident, and I know I had an amazing training camp. So expect great things from me for sure. Just want to work our way through the card and come on to a couple of other uh, topics as well. The headline for Mikey Garcia versus Jesse Vargas. I've said it to. Everybody in my interviews, it's been a fight which has possibly slid under the radar simply because of Walder Fury being the weekend before. But it is a brilliant fight. People working out, can Mikey operate at 147? Is Jesse going to be too big for him? Obviously, he's world, both of them world-level fighters. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, you know, I admire those guys both uh, a lot. I, you know, growing up as a kid, I, I remember watching them both on TV. So to be able to fight on the undercard is amazing. And, and I expect, you know, it's going to be an amazing fight between both, both great champions. So Roman Gonzalez as well. I know he's Nicaragu Nicaraguan, but he's known across those smaller weights for at one stage being a potential pound for pound contender. What do you expect to see in his bout against Cal Uh You know, Chocolatito, he's a true legend of the sport. You know, he's an amazing fighter. Um, and his opponent, I, I've never seen him fight. I've seen a few of his highlights, and he, he's a really good, good fighter. You know, he's the longest um, British, yeah, yeah. British longest reigning world champion. Yeah, yeah. So he's he, first, he's that for a reason, you know. So you know, I expect a great fight. Um, I hear a lot of people saying that that's the real main event of the of the show. So we'll see. I mean, obviously, just to move away from the car, just get your thoughts. As we mentioned, it World of Fury two is. He's obviously just about, what, four days ago, five days ago now. What was your thoughts on Tyson's stoppage victory? Yeah, um, you know, I, Tyson, you know, I know he's a great boxer. You know, I thought he was going to box him for the first few rounds, and I thought Wilder was going to catch him with that right hand. But uh, it was impressive, you know, Tyson Fury gave it to him, and, and he finished it well. Obviously, after the fight, Deontay came out and he said his costume uh, weighed him down a lot on his ring walk and he didn't agree with his corner throwing him a towel. What were your thoughts on both of those comments? I thought they should have they should have thrown a towel uh, like a round or two before they did. But and about the costume, man, you know who knows, you know. <laughs> yeah. Could we expect to see you have a ring walk like that in the future? No, definitely <laughs> not. No, simple guy, keep it simple. Obviously, Deontay has also said he's going to exercise that rematch clause. We'll expect a third bout. Something you're interested in? Um, I feel like it isn't going to be the same outcome as the, the last fight. Um, I feel like they should just go for Fury and, and AJ. That's what I was going to ask you. you know, if Fury Joshua was to happen, how do you see it playing out? Uh, this is a really tough fight. You know, Fury is a, a great boxer. He's really big. Um, but AJ is also a good boxer, and, and I like how he puts his punches together. Um, a lot of people wouldn't agree with it, but I'd go with AJ. Is that just because he saw me match room as well? <laughs> Everyone says that, but no, I really, I'm a big fan of AJ, so I, I feel like AJ will be able to uh, finish it off. It would definitely be a brilliant fight, and not one that I'm going to call myself. I'll sit on the fence. But Diego, it's been a pleasure to catch up with you once again. I hope I'll speak to you soon, and hopefully in the UK as well. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Oh uh, yeah, thank you everyone for the support, and just follow my journey all the way to the top. Thank you. <laughs>